Uh, hello and welcome to All Stars Online. And yes, we are here for a, a little chat, Hugh. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting up with Hugh for a quick chat about coffee competitions, his coffee career, and some other bits of um, other bits and bits and pieces. So we're going to now watch a video of that now. Hello and welcome to All Stars Online. My name is Jeff Han, and this week we are joined by Hugh Kelly. Hugh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, uh, my name's Hugh Kelly. I'm from Australia. Uh, I was a Barista champion in 2016 and 2017, uh, and I work at Honor Coffee in Australia and with San Remo as well in Italy. This season of All Stars Online is made possible by our season sponsors, Brewster and Nutrimilk, and supported by Scotsman Ice, San Remo, and Chemex. Thank you for your support. So, what is your favorite memory from starting out in coffee? uh favorite memory um i think yeah like i used to work outside uh my first job i worked at one of on a coffee's first accounts um we were in the first handful um and we were working in a coffee cart outside uh in canberra as well so in winter yeah it get bloody cold so we worked one day that was I think it was like minus two in the morning and I'm in an outdoor coffee cart and there's no one there. So we had to kind of try and come up with something to do or to keep us occupied. So we just did little latte art battles behind a little um, coffee cart because we had no customers because no one's outside because it's so cold. But that kind of went into Honor Coffee doing a lot of these sort of latte art jams back in, what was it, 2010, 20, 2009? It didn't have many latte art jams around then but it was one of these things that we started doing with just a handful of people um and then they became these big events and now there's these huge events all over the place with big prizes and everything and yeah i guess it was a kind of backyard kind of thing back then um so yeah that was that was super fun you wouldn't catch yeah. me in a latte art competition these days though so i'm um, <laughs> <laughs> not going anywhere near that uh, so uh, next question is actually about um, your um, your competition, uh, your performance in Korea. So how did the candy floss idea come about? Can you talk through that? Yeah, um, that was so every every year. Usually we're competing in Melbourne um, for the Australian comps, and the year before that, I was with Danny Wilson. He's the Australian Coffee Good Spirits champion the last couple of years. Um, and his partner, Britt, as well. We did the six-hour drive from Melbourne back to Canberra. And we started on this sort of tangent. And then the, uh, we were looking on eBay for these sort of cheap, I think they were like $10, um, you know, candy floss machines. We we're like, oh, that could be a good idea. So, yeah, got one of those. And that almost took my head off. It was spinning on the on a little pin. And that launched across the roastery, this hot, like round circle that didn't even make floss properly. So I was like, okay, I need to go full on, um, full on big style with it. So obnoxious pink and big. Yeah, yeah. I set that up. I set that up in the roastery, and we, we've got kind of like a fishbowl glass window between the roastery and the cafe in the front. And I had this setting up, uh, set up doing fairy floss in the or candy floss in the roastery people were looking through the windows like what the hell is he doing and like how, how did you go about putting that on stage in korea did you take it from australia could you talk through yeah did you that, was, get it? <laughs> that was a massive like, what? Game in, yeah <laughs> korea was yeah all the gear taking over to korea was a nightmare um and i had a lot of kind of larger gear like the milk cloud thing that milk texturing device so there was that and then we had the fairy floss or cotton candy machine on top of that just as big so it was almost like a four group machine inverted rolling around the streets of korea um yeah to get that <laughs> to get that over all right hugh here we go we've got a photo of uh can you maybe talk us through this moment this was this was your back-to-back -back moment yeah this was the second year in a row that you yeah won. Yeah, I, I went as to, well. Yeah, because I had Dublin. Dublin, I had a major stuff up with my shots in semis, and it was a whole lot of run on issues and and whatever. I knew I hadn't approached that competition right, um, and I wasn't. 
yep. in the right headspace for that. So 2017 was like I was I was like I'm I'm gonna go win this because I need to yep. fix you know the issues that was so clear uh, from Dublin. It was one of those like you leave the competition going okay like it's so obvious what i need to work on so the next year was kind of that fix my problems and rectify the issues so it kind of got to that end point and i you know i literally was on that finals day going doesn't matter what happens like i've already like universe is on my side i've already won like it was yeah such a crazy day weird like bad things were happening yeah. you know in backstage and on stage and i was just laughing the whole way through it so it was like, yep. yeah, super special day. Ch- changing things up a bit, can you tell us about the new documentary film called Coffee Heroes? Oi, you're, you're <laughs> quite enjoy. <laughs> Just dropping it in. Yeah, no, I, I loved it. Um, yeah, I watched it the other night. Um, I, I, What's it about? I saw some of like, uh, it's about, um, it's kind of like a next step. For, for Sasha in a way, and it involves um, some of the competition leading up to Amsterdam. Um, so a little bit of like the back end of competition and um, it's a big feature with you know, John Gordon and Agnieszka um, on, on, that, on that win as well. That was incredible. Um, and yeah, like it, it's, it's a bit about that journey and then a little bit of another side to, I guess, the way Sasha works with people. Um, and the team and the group and you know they travel to Ethiopia and and it's sourcing the coffee and um yeah that looked like such a fun trip I'm I'm super jealous that would have yeah, been it <laughs> was a really fun trip um and yeah it's going to be out in November uh worldwide so we're sort of looking at releasing that and um more people will get to see it and Hugh you're one of maybe 10 people who have who have watched the film so far so um yeah, yeah, I I loved it. I wasn't. I mean, I, I thought you know every time a second movie gets made, you're sort of like, oh yeah, is it going to be? I thought it it sort of stepped it up personally. I really liked it. Cool. So, yeah, well, yeah. in a way, it's not it's not really a direct sequel to the Coffee Man. It's it's a new story. It's you know it's following Sasha's journey as a coach, and then you know very closely working with Agnieszka and her journey to Amsterdam World Brewster mm-hmm. Championship, and you know mm-hmm. becoming the first woman to win the World Brewster Championships. That ends up being like the, the crux of the story. So this is the point uh, of this section. Uh, so what we do is um, I'll mention two options and you have to give me an answer as quickly as possible. All right, here we go. City break or beach holiday? Beach holiday. Sweet or sour? Sweet. Ninjas or pirates? Ninjas. Espresso or filter? Espresso. <laughs> Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Milk chocolate. Invisible or super strength? Super strength. Window seat or aisle seat? Aisle seat. Cookies or ice cream? Ice cream. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Harry Potter, definitely. All right, uh, so oh, that's it. That's it, Hugh. We're done. Th- thanks for the chat. <laughs> this season of All Stars Online is made possible by our season sponsors, Brewster and Nutrimilk, and supported by Scotsman Ice, San Remo, and Chemex. Thank you for your support. Oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> I forgot. So I forgot about how many times we had to do that. <laughs> I'm terrible. No, we're not going to do that again. No, we're not. Yeah, that was um, it was a good chat. Is there any other? Is there any answers um, to any of those questions that have maybe changed since we last talked, or anything you want to add? Um, no, not really. Like I, I still feel the same way about it all. Your movie's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> so the WC all uh, WC All Stars are from all around the world. They are finalists from the World Coffee Championships. We sent them a few questions so we could get to know them a little better, and here's a short video of one of those questions. Dance, because 
I don't know. Well, this body's not designed for it, but uh, that I have a big passion for it. Um, and uh, dancehall, Afropop, hip hop, love those styles. One of my main hobbies is cycling, and I also had a national title in 2012. A um, skill that not many people know I have is I'm a black belt in Kung Fu and I'm pretty good with the sword. I really like to play chess. When I was a kid, I used to assist to local competition and even got to be sub-champion of my city in the infant level. It's something I really enjoy and I'm passionate about. I'm pretty good at cooking, you know. Since early childhood, I wanted to work with great and complex products. So, as you can see, I'm not changed my mind very much since then. <laughs> so, when I have free time, I enjoy preparing exotic and delicious meals for my friends and family. I like to do wood turning, and I really like it to see how you can transform a square block of wood into something smooth and very soft and and having all round edges uh, only round round things everywhere i love this if you can call it a skill i can put uh, boxes and uh, suitcases in the trunk of my car that they fit exactly like tetris i ferment almost everything um yeah every kind of food possible and my thumbs can do this <laughs> um, so we now have a video that you made, Hugh. Yeah, it's your signature beverage video. Um, so uh, for the audience, you can download the recipe card in the handout section at the top right. So yeah, we're now going to watch this video from you, Hugh. Um, I'm Hugh Kelly, the Australian Barista Champion uh, from 2016, 2017. That's really impressive. Whoa. Whoa, just... Whoa. I am in On A Coffee in Canberra, making you a super fun signature drink. Um, coffee I'm using today is uh, Ethiopian coffee. It's uh, carbonic macerated uh, Guji coffee. So this drink I'm going to call Guji Mousse make a bit more sense as we move along. Basically this lot is T107. Um, it is a very vibrant, sparkling um, kind of profile, uh, but it's also dried as a natural. So we get a whole lot of fruit character as well. Um, and it's quite an extended uh, fermentation. So one of the biggest things with this coffee is we've taken kind of white florals and delicate sort of lighter colors um, and we've added darker shades to it as well. Um, it's got more texture, more sparkle than the regular natural, um, and then it's got that full array of. Uh, oh, let's go that. Yeah. It's got that full array of colors of fruits. So you got like pineapples, jackfruit, um, through the peaches, plums, um, some darker berries, and the florality um, of the washed version of this coffee is very kind of jasmine white florals, uh, but in this coffee it's darker florals, so you're thinking like lavender and violets and things like that. Um, so we've got a heap of fun things to play with, um, and yeah, let's get into it. So when we ferment in a whole cherry, uh, we risk getting a lot of these bitter tannins if we put a lot of roast on the coffee. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is, run a filter shot for this. Um, this is a filter roast profile, uh, very fast, very light. Uh, it's sort of similar to the roast profile I use in Korea, um, and I'm gonna be using a very similar extraction process as well. Uh, so I'm going to really low dose, um, 15 and a half grams. And I'm gonna be stretching this coffee right out. So I'll be going about 47 to 50 grams in the cups. Um, in quite a fast shot time. Now this keeps all the vibrancy, the lighter, more sparkling fruit profiles. Um, it doesn't bring as many heavier notes and we don't get that sort of bit of tannin that we can get when we put more roast on a coffee like this. Um, it is quite big, intense coffee. Um, so I wanted to show the lighter side of that through extraction. 
Um, so, yeah, the reason why this coffee can take it is because of process. So because we're processing a uh, long time in cherry, getting a lot of that lactic acid, giving us more of that lactic creaminess, more texture. Uh, and then drying inner cherry only builds on that. So when we dilute this coffee out, it can kind of hold itself. It has enough of that structure to sort of hold those flavors together and keep it relatively balanced. Um, but to give more texture from this lighter coffee, um, I'm going to tan this really hard. Um, luckily I've been eating a lot lately. So much bread, so I'm gonna pour all my body weight Last time I checked, I, um, I was nice and heavy, so just say 80 to 90 kilos through that puck. Um, if you have an auto tamp, you can just kind of tamp that um, three or four times. So tamp this really, really hard. It's gonna slow down the initial flow rate, giving us a little bit more texture. But then when the shot will open up because we're at quite a coarse grind setting. Uh, I can really stretch that shot out without risking the puck falling apart and getting a lot of channel. So this way, we get to access a whole lot more of the vibrant fruit characters that are super interesting in this signature drink. So um, because this coffee has a lot of complexity, I don't have to add a lot to it. Um, it's got a lot of fruit character, a lot of fun things going on, and we're gonna highlight that with just two other ingredients. So, I wanna let this cool for a minute. I need an ice rock on the back. Trust a barista competitor to have a bag full of ice rocks. Then keep things nice and First ingredient. Now this is similar to an ingredient I use in Dublin. Um, this is freeze concentrated uh, musket grapes. So this is from a winery in Canberra. Uh, and I love this grape because it's really floral, um, especially in the skins. You get um, yeah, a lot of these sort of purple floral characters. Um, and I found this combined with this coffee um, brought out more of that, viol uh, that sort of violet, lavender sort of characteristic. Kind of gives it this pop puree um, sort of quality to the coffee, which is really cool. Uh, but I found this ingredient, if I just juiced it straight, it would dilute the coffee too much. Um, so to maintain that like florality and all the aromatics, I couldn't heat it and reduce it. Um, so instead I froze it, which sort of freezes the water content separate to those sugars and aromatic compounds. Um, and then I've just defrosted this um, and allowed that sugar to sort of drip out first. Um, the water kind of gets left up on top. Um, so I did this in Dublin with black currants because um, that fit that particular coffee. Uh, but this one works super well with the Guji. So bring it back. So this is around 15 bricks, uh, sorry, 25 bricks, which is quite high. It's sort of syrupy, quite intense, but still super aromatic. Like it smells amazing. So I'm gonna go two grams to my espressos. Awesome. So the, the fruit sort of character in that grape is actually also bringing more of that plum note out. Um, and then we're gonna use the next ingredient more for texture and then to open up the flavor more. So um, this is uh, coconut water. It's been fermented with uh, little kefir grains, like water kefirs. Um, so I basically added the water kefirs in and held this at 24 to 26 degrees. I've added 1% of sugar um, and that's fermented in an enclosed environment for about three days. Um, this coconut water, um, it's a very fresh ingredient. Um, that lactic uh, sort of character we've developed is gonna build on that lactic creaminess from 
uh, the T107 from that enclosed fermentation. Um, and also that dilution that we get from this and the coconut water is sort of just brought out more of the tropicals. So um, I think pineapple, jackfruit, um, when I added three grams of that, uh, I got more of that jackfruit sort of quality and the pineapples. Um, so the next thing is more about maintaining that vibrancy, opening that coffee up, really giving it that lift. I'm going to charge this with CO2. Need a bowl. And that's gonna give us not only that lighter, whipped, kind of moussey character, Fuji mousse, but it's also going to give us that sparkle to build up on that lactic sparkle, um, and then help open up more of those tropicals. Do this, One of these guys. So super simple drink, um, really delicious ingredients, uh, but it's really the coffee that's speaking. Um, it has so much flavor because of that process. Um, so whole cherry, then dried as a natural. Um, and then that extraction really stretched out has opened up a lot of that incredible florality, um, all those fruits, and then we've just sort of supported it and made it a little bit more expressive. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time. All right, so um, man, that was a very, uh, very interesting video. How, how did you come up with all that? Um, I guess, yeah, when you're doing competitions you have a bunch of things up your sleeve that I guess I don't know you build a bit of a library of ingredients and techniques and, and things that are kind of just oh that didn't make sense to this coffee but it works for that coffee yeah yeah sure. so I was like okay I'll piece together something with a super fun coffee so much flavor to, to work with um, so I guess ideas when you have a crazy coffee just flow pretty quickly um, so yeah, threw that together in a few days, which was cool. Which was um, super tasty. Interesting, yeah, cool. All right, well now we're going to move on to the Q and A session. Yeah, we've got lots of questions in here ready for you here. Let's just start at the start. Let's see here we go. Um, let's go. So, where in the world do you want to visit first once the pandemic is over? Oh. Um, uh, I guess for coffee-wise, I want to get back to Colombia um, and Holland. I want to get to. I've been to France. Did you say you want to go to France? Yeah, I haven't been in like twenty years, so yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking Europe. Yeah. I've been to Europe a bunch of times lately, and yeah, wineries there. Um, yeah, just go to a bunch of cool European wineries. I reckon that's the that's the first thing I want to do. Nice. That sounds pretty good. I would be totally keen to come. That sounds amazing. Um, here we go. Next question. What would you be doing if you weren't working in coffee? If I wasn't working in coffee, uh, I mean, I was, I was talking about, I don't know, some sort of little fermentation kitchen or something to do with food, I reckon. Um, yeah, like I guess it's what I, I really like doing at home and you can get pretty involved. Um, in that sort of thing, you can get pretty deep. Um, yeah, I reckon, I reckon something to do with food and flavor, even if it's not coffee. Yeah, okay. Um, will you compete in WBC again? I mean, I hope so. Ho hopefully <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, I mean, I was hoping this year would have been, well, it would have been sometime around now, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, Oh, it was like going to be this week in Melbourne. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I, uh, I'm all prepped for Australian comp, and I'm kind of just waiting. And yeah, sure. I think yeah, it got a, it got postponed to November, and then it got postponed again. Hopefully, first quarter next year, but I don't know. 
but I'm kind of just like I've got a whole idea and everything's all just ready. <laughs> it's really? got, yeah, okay. that's it's cool. Got, Can you share any of your idea with us or no? no absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's such a weird feeling because you've got I've got this espresso sitting in the freezer, and it's been there for like nine months, and I'm kind of like trying to hold myself off from just having a little a little taste every. Okay. every and it's got to the point where I just locked it downstairs out of my sight because I was kind of just getting a little too into it. Too tempted. Um, yeah, it's just crazy having coffee like that sitting there and yeah. not, not having anyone to serve it to. I mean, I'm sure I can find people to serve it to, but judges to serve it to. You want judges on a world stage, don't you? Yeah, I want judges on a world stage. Yeah, well, the time will come, I'm sure, in the not too distant future where you'll be able to do that again. So um, that sort of gets into the next question. What what makes you want to keep competing in coffee? Like what drives you to want to keep competing? What gets you up in the morning to be wanting to do it? Um, I guess what I, what I love about, especially barista comp, is there's like there's so much involvement in a concept. And uh, I guess I always see it as a project. Um, and it's kind of a... I don't know, like, for example, Korea was, um, like, first whole cherry carbonic coffee we've ever done. Um, and it was one of those things that's, like, been nagging me for, for years before that as well, um, just getting a whole cherry into fermentation. I don't really think you saw many coffees like that in that comp or before that. Um, but it always nagged me. Um, so was, I guess there's a great opportunity to explore things that you wouldn't otherwise get to explore day to day. Yeah. Uh, I guess there's a lot of bread and butter work, which is really important as well. But then I, I kind of like have this separate, I guess, 20% of my, of, of my head space that is like, wouldn't be cool if, and, and that's where competition really gets me kind of, yeah, putting the pieces together in a way that, you know, may, may not be applicable to everyday life and, and money making right now, essentially, or, um, but then you can, create something or, or an opportunity for the future. I guess that's, yeah. There's so yeah. much exciting stuff happening at the moment as well. So it's sort of, um, it's sort of, yeah, great opportunity to sort of take things that are inspiring you and, and ideas and try to make something new with it. So. Yeah. Um, what about favorite coffee origin and why? Favorite coffee origin. Oh, that's tough. That's really hard. Um, can I have a couple? Can I take <laughs> well, let's talk about your favorites. You don't have to you don't have to say yeah. I mean um I'm loving Colombia for progressive sort of practices. Like there it's just there's so much variation and variety and and yeah, interesting things that you're like, oh I did not think that that's from Colombia when you cup it. Um I love that. Uh for raw like potential off the tree, um either Kenya or uh Santa Barbara in Honduras. They're like the two that stand out to me. It's like, come on, like that Kenyan acidity and then you sort of process it differently and can taste like jelly and watermelon. Like that's, you know, it's crazy what you can get off a tree. And then Santa Barbara, some of these accident lots that end up scoring 93 points in Cup of Excellence and things are just a wash coffee. But it's kind of mm -hmm. like how do they get pineapples in a wash coffee that's not specially processed or specially done? Um I love that, the wildness that can happen by chance. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, what's what's something that we don't know about you? You don't know about me? Yeah, something, uh, that, maybe that, some, something that people in the coffee community would have no idea that, you know, it could be like a hobby, something that you're into. Um, something, something people don't know about me. Um, I guess I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm obsessed with skiing. I try to do that as much really? as I can. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, I love it. You're so obsessed much. with skiing. How often do you go? Um, I mean, this year wasn't as great, but yeah. uh, as we had, but we got to go a little bit, which is all right. Um, but you know, I'd be going almost every weekend in winter. Um, wow. So we're only we're only two hours away from the slope, so it's um. Yeah, you see the storm patterns come through and it's like, yep, take a couple of days off if you can. Um, yeah, I love yeah. 
Um, Canberra is pretty good like that. You know, obviously it's it's two hours to the coast and then it's two hours to the snow. And then obviously we've got seasons, you know, it gets quite hot in summer. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, cold enough to get some snow. So Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 and maybe the other one would be, I don't know, people probably know, I'm obsessed with fermentation. I ferment. <laughs> I knew that about you. I, I think I think half of my food I eat is fermented. Fermented foods, yeah. I, I just like to play around with that stuff a lot. Pretty, I, I do like fermented foods. How, how does your stomach handle it if you have too much? Is it okay? No, it's fine. Fine? Um, I'm too much vinegary, vinegar and all that sort of stuff is not too bad on you? Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I like acidity, so it's, okay. um, yeah, I don't know. Good. I feel great. Cool. That's a good thing. Well, yeah, as long as you feel good. That's All right. Um, we're going we're gonna to move on soon. A couple more quick questions. Uh, do you like coffee cocktails? Yeah. Yeah, no, I do. Um, I had some really cool coffee cocktails at um, SIGS last year. Yep. That was such a dangerous competition to be around, like being <laughs> backstage there and everyone's like, oh, I've got this one-of-a-kind three-bottle thing that's, you know, brewed in some old guy's shoe and there's four <laughs> bottles and I made this cocktail with it and they all taste amazing and you kind of yeah. got glasses coming from everywhere before you know it you're like cool like floors moving a bit and um yeah Danny Wilson as well he gets very deep with it um yeah. you know nine o'clock on a Monday morning he's feeding you some delicious delicious kind of caramelized pear some sort of like weird spirit i've never heard of mixed with coffee and it just works and um right. yeah i guess he changed my perception of it all um yeah. yeah i do nice all right last question hugh if you had one piece of advice to give to a competitor who's starting out in the industry uh what would it be um calibrate with people that uh, you know, calibrated to score sheet. So get really, really familiar with tasting a coffee and judging it. And then, yeah, spend a lot of time just focusing on that. Like don't go too crazy with concept and stuff until you're really comfortable with, you know, getting good espresso scores, good milk scores. Um, you know how to how a signature drink w works and you know how to get good technical. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like work on those to give you your base and then start to add the layers of craziness. Um, I think I wasted a lot of years in competition trying to do crazy stuff and just and just not executing it at all. And then, you know, stripping it back and then rebuilding um, is sort of when I started to see results. So, yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for um, putting in your questions. I hope they were, um, yeah, I hope they were useful and some some good advice and some yeah good insight into you, Hugh, as a competitor and as as a person as well. Uh, the All Stars program was established in 2013 to give our decorated World Coffee Championships competitors a chance to engage with, learn from, and support specialty coffee communities from all around the world. Uh, this next section of our program is going to be looking back at some memorable moments in competitions. And this time we're heading back to a world competitions in Trieste in 2004. Um, you're all gonna enjoy this, so let's take a look. Trieste, uh, 2004, uh, it was uh, Robert uh, from uh, Poland, he was competing and uh, at that year everybody were uh, wearing a little bit like a costume and there was a very strong uh, like a theme in the presentations. Some countries they were uh, having like uh, uh, traditional costumes and uh, Robert from uh, uh, Poland, he had um, uh, his wife um, was uh, at stage and she was uh, representing um, a sunflower. So for those 15 minutes, while he was making uh, uh, his presentation for the judges, she was like a little bit like growing into being 
like a full grown sunflower. And that was like very, very interesting to see. Um, the audience were like hypnotized just watching um, the lady. It was kind of like a, it was a, a beautiful dance and that ended up in, uh, in this uh, full grown um, sunflower. It was, yeah, I haven't seen that uh, again, um, only that time. But it was very memorable, you know. From my memory, she kind of had Toblerone kind of feet, a little bit like an inline figure skater, so it was full lycra. And she was closed and she bloomed like a flower, slowly. It was quite the interpretive dance as I remember it. But yeah, I think it was such a, what's going on that, yeah. In some ways it's ingrained and in some ways it's a little bit blurry. Was that real life or not? Um, so yes, stay for the musical uh, video by Michael Manhart. And it's been a real pleasure to be your host today. My name is Jeff Han and this is Hugh Kelly. And I hope you enjoy the final parts of our episode. Hugh, would you like to say a final anything? Um, thanks very much. Uh, your cat looks like it's sitting on your head. That's uh, <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, no, thanks for having me. It was awesome. <laughs> there he is. He is totally sitting on my head. Yeah. Really? Got it. <laughs> All right. Thank See you, everyone. Bye. See you. Talk soon. Right. Talk soon. Bye. So, I'm Thanks for the chat, Hugh. I hope you enjoyed it, and we got to to, lower, to know a lot more about you. I'm going to repeat that again. Heard it? We have got a lot more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm going to start again. Heard it. And uh, we got to we got to know a lot more about you. I can't get this out. Okay, one more go. <laughs> Hugh, thanks for the chat. Uh, yeah, we had a great chat. We got to lo know a lot more. About <laughs> 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 Focus. All right, thanks for the chat, Hugh. Uh, we got to know a lot more about you, and um, Hugh's just laughing. now everyone's laughing. <laughs> All right, thanks for the chat, Hugh. It was good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay.